Boron is a pretty hot topic right now. It's a supplement and it's a trace mineral that has a pretty profound effects on the body. I talked about it briefly when I talked about testosterone. And one of the things about boron is that it can really lower sex hormone binding globulin. That's the protein that binds testosterone. The total testosterone gets mostly bound up. Uh, and actually about 98% is bound to protein and not usable. And to 2%, the free testosterone does all the work. So boron can significantly decrease this sex hormone binding globulin, thereby highly increasing the rate of free testosterone. So again, for many people, this might work sufficiently to say, hey, instead of supplementing and adding testosterone or going on testosterone replacement therapy, um, if you can free up what you have already, that might be actually a better situation. So I think it does have a very profound impact. Now, there are some drawbacks on it as well, because there is actually a level at which it becomes toxic. And I want to mention that as well. So again, none of this is medical advice, and you should really consider before you start any supplement, specifically boron, to talk to your primary care doctor if that's something that's okay for you, because it's an element. So when you look at boron, it's an element. It's in the periodic table of elements. So it means also that you know whatever you take in is not metabolized. It's excreted as it is. It can't get broken down any further, right? And mostly it's uh, via kidney excretion, kidney metabolism, so kidney excretion. So basically now you have um, to have a good kidney function to get rid of it. And people will excrete it probably at different rates. So for one person, a certain dose might be fine and they excrete it and they keep a good level. For another person where the kidney function is a bit maybe suppressed, let's say, they might overdose on this. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So it's an element. The interesting thing is that we have less boron uh, today in our foods. We're only getting about between one and two grams uh, per day with our food. And that's because today, 50 to 70% of the boron that used to be in the soil is pretty much gone due to over farming. So we have less available in our food and that's something to consider. And there are certain studies being done in populations where it's very high in the drinking water. It's naturally occurring and they had some very positive outcomes. But I'm gonna talk about that in a second as well. Um, so we're getting less than two grams per day, sorry, two milligrams per day, not grams, milligrams, very important, uh, from food. It's effective, um, triggering all these effects, we're gonna talk about that, somewhere between six to 15 milligrams per day. And it's possibly toxic, and that's very important, if you consume more than 20 milligrams per day. So, you know, there's a sort of a fine line. And even if you are staying within the six to 15 milligrams a day, again, for some people, it might accumulate because the excretion rate might be a bit slower. So that's something to keep in mind. 16% um, bioavailability, and that's very interesting. So it's actually very good. So in terms of um, supplements, 16% available. So it means the oral bioavailability. So when you take it as a, as a tablet, how much gets in your bloodstream? That's actually pretty high. It's actually very good. So hormone optimization, and I talked in my last video about this, it can increase your free testosterone by about 40%, which is very interesting. At the same time, it can decrease estradiol. So for men, that's actually a very good situation. We want our free testosterone to be higher because that's the testosterone that does the work. And the estradiol should be on the lower side. Now, there were some studies where this is a bit conflicting because they did studies uh, in uh, menopausal women and saw that it can actually increase estradiol and also another study in MIN showed that over time it did increase estradiol. And even though that sounds a bit confusing, it might be that when you think about it, um, testosterone can get uh, actually converted to estradiol. So when that number goes up, ultimately estradiol might go up a bit. These hormones are always balancing each other out. So I think also the impact on estradiol is fairly low. Um, I think again, it's a very good one for hormonal purposes. I think it works extremely well and I don't think there are any real drawbacks even when you look at all these studies and the different levels that were found. Okay, then cancer protection, that's a pretty big one. And um, it can significantly decrease the risk of certain cancers, you know, uh, prostate, breast, cervical, and lung cancers. And they looked at epidemiological studies where you had populations that had a very high boron content in their drinking water, for example. And they were consuming about six to seven milligrams per day naturally. So again, usually, between one to two milligrams, the average is about 1.5 milligrams we get from normal food these days because our soil has been depleted. Now they got a lot more and certain rates of cancers were much, much lower. Now we can always say, look, this is a correlation, but correlation doesn't always equal causation. But because when you look at it, when all the other factors are taken into consideration, they were very equal to other populations with a lower boron consumptions and they still had those benefits. So I think there's really something to that. 
So yes, cancer protection is something that I think is very, very um, likely that boron has, and that's actually a, a fantastic finding. Um, anti-inflammatory, very highly anti-inflammatory. So when we look at inflammatory factors like C-reactive protein, tumor necrosis factor alpha, those have been uh, decreased when people were consuming boron. And that's very interesting, again, within the therapeutic range, of course. And then it would increase the um, superoxide dismutase and glutathione peroxidase. And that's actually very important as well. So it does kind of have this shift where the um, anti-inflammatory compounds were increased and the pro-inflammatory, the bad compounds, were decreased. So it has a very strong anti-inflammatory effect. And that's one reason why it's used in arthritis. You know, a lot of people are considering using uh, boron or boron-containing products in arthritis treatment. It's still fairly new. And I think there, uh, there needs to be a lot more studies on this specifically in that field. But this seems at least very promising. Brain function, and that's an important one, improves concentration, memory, and cognitive performance that has been studied. So that's something that you know a lot of people experience when they're taking it. This is a bit harder to quantify, of course. And some of these studies, specifically when it comes to nutritional studies, I'm always a bit, you know, up in the air about how how much weight we should put on them. And you know, but again, for many people, that's what they have reported. You know, bone health. Yes, increases bone strength and decreases the risk of osteoporosis, and that's a very important one. It could be partially related to this uh, increase in vitamin D levels. Vitamin D3 gets increased by taking in boron, which is important as well. Have that right down here, and uh, also magnesium. So we do absorb magnesium better when we have uh, boron as a supplement, right? Now, most supplements, when I looked at this online, they're somewhere between 6 milligrams and 10 milligrams. And again, if you're thinking about on the high end, you're probably consuming two milligrams per day from your diet. You're adding in, let's say, 10 milligrams, you're already at 12. Um, you want to kind of stay be below the 50 milligrams per day. And again, this is not medical advice at all. Talk to your primary care doctor if this is something that it's safe for you to take. Because the risk is the following. If you take too much boron, there are severe issues, especially in children. So you got to keep any supplement or any medication. And I would almost put this in the category, actually, of a medication. Um, it's an element, and when we think of medications, another element that's used to treat, for example, mood disorders is lithium. So lithium is also an element, and same situation, you know, uh, you excrete it via your kidneys, and if kidney function is, is suppressed, there could be issues with lithium toxicity, and same with boron. So boron can be very useful. I think it's uh, hugely beneficial at the right dose. But overdosing is very dangerous, and for young children, there have been fatalities, so there have been deaths documented, even at doses just above six milligrams, which seems fairly low. Now, I don't know if there were other things involved as well, but that's something to consider. So for sure, this should never be given to children, especially young children. For adults, again, if we um, consume too much boron, if we overdose on this, what are the symptoms? The immediate symptoms would be uh, nausea, vomiting, headache, diarrhea, and um, then there could be a few others as well. You know, people feel dizzy, they feel, you know, concentration is weird and all that kind of stuff. So there could be some neurological effects as well. And that's something to keep in mind, you know. Now, um, there were some studies that showed you need to use for grown-ups a fairly high amount for this to become toxic. But that's with a one-time consumption. What you got to keep in mind is if, we t if you take this, let's say, daily, and it builds up because maybe you're not excreting as much as the next person or as the people that were studied, that's something to keep in mind. So what many people do now, they buy a supplement, take it for three weeks and then take one week off. So boron is a supplement, um, again, this is just not a recommendation, but for all practical purposes, I started taking this. I started taking this um, about four weeks ago and I do feel um, a lot of benefits from it. Of course, I'm concerned uh, about it building up as well, so I will do um, the three weeks on and one week off. That's uh, what I've decided to do on this. But in terms of concentration, yes. In terms of, you know, uh, uh, muscle strength and, and muscle development, I think it does have a big impact on that. And in general, you know, when you look at all the other effects um, that have been studied, I think this can be very positive. Taking into consideration that really our minerals are really uh, decreasing in our food. Our food is kind of becoming deprived of very essential minerals and other uh, vitamins as well because again of over farming processing you know we have a lot of highly processed foods these days so they don't they don't supply the same nutrients um, as we had many years ago so yes i think boron is possibly a very good supplement but it has drawbacks again not medical advice you know always do your own research and talk to your doctor before starting anything certainly keep this if you get it out of reach of children but again it could be very positive 
If you want to use boron to optimize testosterone, I would also recommend to consider looking into zinc and vitamin D3 as a supplement. And I talked about that in my video about testosterone because I think those will also have a great impact. But again, boron in terms of decreasing sex hormone binding globulin is very unique. Um, you know, and again, the studies are very promising. And also, you know, it might be something if you're thinking about supplementing, uh, you know, hormones like testosterone, this might be something to consider first before you go that route. And I mentioned this last time, I think, you know, prescription of these hormones is overdone. I don't think, uh, you know, well, I think some people benefit from this, sure. But I think there's a great proportion of people that get prescribed testosterone without really needing it because you have enough testosterone in your body. Remember, 98% is bound and unusable. And if you can free some of that up, you might not need to supplement with anything else.